turns out there's a whole world of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet glitches that I never knew existed, because a glitch hunter just broke open Scarlet and Violet speedruns with four brand new glitches. Glitches that are so ridiculous that it might be possible to break the next hour barrier. And to explain exactly what was found, we need to go back to November 13th, 2023. The day a speedrun of the Path of Legends category was posted out of nowhere in the Scarlet and Violet speedrunning Discord. But it wasn't just any speedrun. It was a glitch speedrun that beat the world record by more than three minutes. So what exactly was found to achieve such a monumental amount of time save? Well, to begin this story, we need to head to Poco Path, which is where Rare King is located on the ground. While in Poco Path, we'll need a Lechonk, Tarantula, or Hopip to be nearby. The reason this list of Pokemon is so specific is because these are the only Mons aggressive enough to walk towards you, and we'll need to bait them into the perfect position to get this first glitch to work. Once the wild Pokemon is in position, we'll then need to head to a specific spot on the ground, aim the camera at the wild Pokemon, send Foy Coco out into the overworld with the Let's Go feature, then book it towards a fence far away from Foy Coco. After Foy Coco obliterates the wild Pokemon, the nearby rare candy starts pouring in at an absolutely ridiculous rate, to the point where glitch hunter Yi Hamaki had enough rare candies to reach level 100 in less than 8 seconds. This this is an absolute gold mine that saves multiple minutes at a time across all the categories. Because throughout every Scarlet Violet speedrun, runners will normally grab a ton of resources like EXP candies, rare candies, and TMs on the ground in order to make the fights much easier. But the process of grabbing these resources all over the map takes quite a bit of time to do, which is why this first glitch is so important to perform. However, it's unfortunately quite a precise glitch because if a single step on the screen is messed up in any way shape or form the glitch will likely not work at all forcing speedrunners to reset if they mess up now believe it or not the next glitch might just be even more broken than the rare candy duplication glitch after getting foy coco to level 99 yi hamaki headed towards the titan cloth Cloth is typically fought first in most Scarlet and Violet speedruns because of the boost ability you get from defeating it, which lets you travel much faster in the overworld than you would be able to by just walking. Yi would then walk up to the Titan and one-shot the first phase with a not very effective Ember using a level 99 Foy Coco. This part of the fight is not important at all, but what Yi did on the second phase absolutely is. Yi would start phase 2 of the fight by lining themselves up on the edge of the cliff, followed by sending Foy Coco off of it, running 4 steps down, 1 step left, open the map, select the warp point, wait for the sound of Foy Coco being recalled back to its Pokeball to go off, then as soon as the sound went off, Yi would press A to warp and take two crouch steps towards Cloth before uncrouching. If done correctly, this will put you into Mezagoza before Foy Coco is recalled, sending you straight into the Urba Mystica cave and skipping all the cutscenes, dialogue, and battle surrounding the entire second phase of this Titan fight. And we're not done with these glitches just yet. We still got about two more that Yi Hamaki used to destroy this category. But in order to abuse those glitches, we need to go from here all the way to here. The journey to get to this spot takes us into the snowy section of Paldea, where we'll be marking a certain Pokemon Center near the Ice Gym, head into the Ghost Gym Town, and jump straight off the cliff in the direction of the Titan Dondozo. This jump off the cliff will then wrong warp us all all the way across the lake, putting us closer to the Great Tusk fight. Why does this happen exactly? Well, your guess is as good as mine, since this is still a mystery to us speedrunners to this day. But now that we're here, the next glitch is upon us. We'll just need to defeat the Great Tusk normally, since there isn't a great way to skip this fight, which isn't really a problem for our now level 100 starter Pokemon, unlocking the most broken power up thanks to the Super Glide glitch. But before we talk about this glitch, I just wanted to say thank you. Because covering the Super Glide glitch when it first came out in January of 2023 is what took my channel off from 10,000 subscribers all the way to 50,000 subscribers in less than a year. This changed my life so much and I can't thank you all enough for letting me do what I love for a living. 
Now, back to the glitches. To perform a super glide glitch, you must first start by swiping your control stick from right to left and timing the activation and deactivation of your glide. When done correctly, you will start building up speed to the point where sections of the overworld will not be loaded in at all. This is important to note because you can super glide from Glaciata Mountain to Earthworm fast enough that the Titan will not be loaded in properly causing it to start the fight immediately without burrowing around like it normally does. And speaking of normally, this is usually where we'd fight Earthworm's first phase, but instead, we'll be zooming out the camera far enough that the first phase of Earthworm will be skipped entirely. If you watched closely enough as we were taking off on our flight, you might have noticed that the camera kinda got stuck in place. This glitchy camera might be familiar to those who played classic Nintendo 64 games, since the camera in those games can often get stuck on walls as if they were programmed like a character that you can control. And when it comes to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we can easily get the camera stuck on a fence before we start gliding. And because we're constantly dropping down while gliding, the camera will just stay stuck like that since it can never go above or through the fence when stuck at the right angle. And thanks to being able to zoom in on your character Character with a button, we can just hold down that button until we're about to start the earthworm fight, then let go at the right time to completely deload the fight altogether. Phase 2 of the Earthworm fight will be deleted by an Ember since skipping the phase will be slower. However, Bombardier will not be so lucky in either phase, because now we can combine every single glitch I've mentioned thus far and apply it to both of its phases. First, we'll need to get the camera stuck on Glaciota Mountain, start gliding fast enough to deload the bird, hop into the water to load Bombardier's fight at the exact same time as zooming the camera out to skip phase one. For phase two, we'll have Fuecoco run off a cliff, pull up the flying menu, wait until we hear it returning to its Pokeball before we warp, take a few steps towards the bird and warp far away, skipping the fight and loading directly into the Herba Miska cutscene. All of this was done to beat one of the most optimized and popular Scarlet and Violet speedrun categories in 48 minutes. But it's not the only one that could be affected by these glitches. In fact, the biggest category that could be blown wide open is any percent. An any percent speedrun of Scarlet and Violet requires you to go through all four storylines. Path of Legends, Starfall Street, Victory Road, and The Way Home. All four of these storylines are stacked with dialogue and cutscenes that can likely be skipped. And since any cutscene or battle close to a cliff or by a fence or area that can keep the camera stuck in place has the potential to be broken apart. And if I had to put my money on potential skips, I'd say that the battles all over Area Zero, the final battle against Amona, and the Starfall Street base can probably be skipped with the right setup. But it's hard to say if all these glitches will be enough to break any percent's five hours barrier. Because as of this video, speedrunners would need to save a combined total of 20 minutes. Three of those minutes have already been confirmed to be possible to save, but I truly think that the sky is the limit with the rare candy glitch and cutscene skipping glitches for any percent. But for now, this is only a theory. A game theory? Is that how that goes? A a anyways, if you want to see more glitches like this in Scarlet and Violet, check out Gi Himaki, who's been hunting down glitches since the release of Scarlet and Violet. And if you enjoyed this video enough, consider subscribing to me for more Pokemon speedrunning news and content.